Good afternoon, and welcome to the IBA's Celebration of Banking Luncheon. Iowa banks are committed to their communities, contributing over $50 million annually to local organizations. And at the same time, and even more importantly, donating volunteer hours in excess of 200,000 hours every year. Iowa bankers are there for their communities through good times and bad, and we've seen a little bit of both this year. Our convention theme reflects that, navigating challenges and unlocking opportunities. This is what happened time and time again in so many of our communities this year. Today, we wanna to share a few of those stories with you. We hope you're inspired by them. May 21st of 2024 is a day that for everyone in our community will be a date etched in stone in their mind for the rest of their lives. Uh, a tornado rolled through about 40 miles from west of Corning all the way up through rural areas and hit the town of Greenfield. Uh, although the town of Greenfield did receive much of the media coverage following the tornado, there was a lot of people in rural communities that lost farms, homes, uh, and properties as well. The town of Greenfield within the city limits lost over 200 houses uh, that were completely destroyed and nearly 370 that were destroyed or received significant damage. Right after the tornado, when I saw the media coverage about the path that it had followed and, and uh, how it had hit Greenfield, I was immediately concerned about the bank building. So I was calling around trying to figure out, hey, was the bank building hit? Where are we at with that? And then I heard that it went just north of Corning and across in a rural area. And a family that has been customers of the bank for decades that I've worked with my entire career lived in that path. We watched this one form over here near Corning and it got more and more defined as it come this way. And uh, before we went to the basement, it was a full wedge. And uh, we went to the basement and our ears popped and we could hear stuff hitting the house, but it just passed just a bit to the south, a few hundred feet to the south. And unfortunately, it, it came right from my house and the farm buildings and everything else. And it just completely wiped it out. You know, in the end, you basically lost everything other than a few things. So, um, it, although it was a couple days before I was able to get down there to see it, uh, that was a really interesting experience where I'd done so many things for their family, uh, been with them through a lot of different building projects and things over the years. And then to go and see their family farm just completely destroyed. It was a beautiful property with a big old farmhouse, beautiful trees, uh, hog buildings, shop, barn, and there was nothing left when I saw it, and that was really hard to look at. The bank's been wonderful, and they always, they've always been there for me over 40 years and, and helped me out. I think the, the, the two guys that we work with, Matt and Paul, really took leadership positions, you know, in the community and helped out, um, helped with cleanup and stuff like that. You know, the bank's also there. I think they had an interest rate for tornado victims that was pretty good, and that was helpful. And they were understanding with, and didn't make you feel a lot of pressure, because you know, how's stuff gonna work out with the insurance companies and stuff like that. And they were very understanding and, and have been working with us and the insurance companies to get everything cleaned up and stuff like that. And, basically start over, so I really appreciated that. Greenfield is a resilient community, and although this isn't the specific scenario we'd like to see it happen, we are excited to see so many new and improved homes get built in the community, have businesses do some really neat new things as far as facilities go, and our bank really is excited to be a part of the good things that will come in the aftermath of such a disaster. Saturday morning, uh, about 
6.30, we got uh, some phone calls saying that the lumber yard was starting to get underwater. So I called Jason and we tried to get here. Um, couldn't get over the bridge here to get here because the water was coming up real fast. We did get around the outside of town and get over here about two blocks behind and tried to walk here uh, to get in just to see and we couldn't get here. Uh, the pressure of the water, the river was, was pretty bad. Yeah, just even walking across the street, there was, there was a current even this deep that you, could, you couldn't wade through it. So uh, we weren't able to get to the building. Um, about seven hours later, there was another, at that point it was probably two feet deep. Yeah, this mor in the morning it was about two feet, but it, like an hour and a half, two hours later, it just hit and it was like six feet. Yeah. It was about five and a half, six feet up on the side of our walls and inside the buildings. I think the last flooding they had was back in 1953. 19, yeah, we found that out when we talked we to We found that out and it was uh, about two and a half, three feet. So we we beat that by about three feet. Double it, yeah. Um, it was it was very it was very bad to see. Yeah. You just couldn't get here to do anything. There's nothing you could do but uh, wait for it to come down and begin from there. Bang Midwest uh, was one of our very first phone calls. Uh, Luke Donaworth uh, gave us a call, to check up on us, uh, see see what the condition was, uh, what, what status was, if there was anything he could do to help. So the day after the flooding, you start thinking about those who have been impacted and. Jason and Jamie down at Consumers were one of the first businesses that popped into my mind. So I did reach out to Jason, um, just wanted to see how he was doing. Obviously it's pretty devastating when something you've worked with every day and tried to build is taken away with a flood. And you know, there's nothing you can do at the time other than maybe provide, provide some reassurance and provide some guidance that you know, we'll be here to support whatever you need and help however we can. I. I don't know how we could do it without them. Um, they're, they do so many more things than just borrow money and, and things like that. They, you know, they um, help help organize financing through, you know, uh, through SBA, and uh, you know, we work with them with our flood insurance. Um, yeah, they're they're more than just a banker for us. Yeah, Bank Midwest. How we approach our client relationships is we try to look at it like a partnership. Uh, and there's always going to be ups and downs. It's easy to be a good partner when things are going well. It's a little tougher when things aren't going well. And I guess we try to try to step up on those days that maybe things aren't going as planned, or in this case, you know, something catastrophic happens out of nowhere. Just provide that support uh, and reassurance for those customers that uh, we're going to be here with them to help them through anything that they need. Giving back to the community is one of the reasons I love working for Community Bank and Trust. Just last year, our 29 team members volunteered over 1,300 hours supporting 69 different organizations here in Waterloo and Cedar Falls. My name is Michelle Feltis. I'm co-founder with my husband, Dean, who's the executive director of One City. Uh, we started our nonprofit, One City United, in 2018 after six years of research into the issues related to poverty in Waterloo. And uh, Momentum is a program that we launched under One City in the heat of the pandemic in 2020. Uh, community Bank and Trust Trust has always listened to us and they listen to us through all of our research and through uh, the needs that we were seeing in the community. We relayed those to uh, Kyle and, and Zach and Stacy and they listened and that was way before we even became the nonprofit. They do exactly what they say they're going to do and they, they help us create opportunities for all. Myself, along with other team members, have really been involved with their Momentum program in teaching the financial empowerment, you know, working with their students to help give them the skills about better ways to manage their finances, to work through a budget, uh, teach them about credit and best ways to build and repair credit, just so that when their students graduate the Momentum program, they've really got those life skills to better manage their finances. 
Momentum has so many stories of success. We're in our 20th term. Uh, we started in 2020 and we have, I have one story that really sticks out and it, it's about Lewis. Lewis is our, he, he graduated term 12 and he was homeless in the Salvation Army shelter when he came to us. He had several barriers and through momentum and community bank and trust investment in our program, we were able to instill the hope and he was able to make the change and focus on his opportunities. Now, he is a human resource director, multilingual for Pre's Manufacturing in Independence, Iowa. And now he's hiring our graduates. The life skills about budgeting and managing your finances aren't always easy for some. And that's why banks, especially community bank and trust, can play a great role in just helping develop individuals in our community and pass those skills on so that they can better manage their finances.